Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord our God. Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord our God. Come tired, weary, all in pain, come join me in a song refrain. Simple hymn of love and praise that tells about my God. A shepherd kind is your his light, his word and wisdom are delight. His guiding hand will never desert me. As his guiding hand will never desert me. Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord our God. Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord our God. My brothers and my sisters share a life of love beyond compare. The brotherhood and sisterhood are something more than words. For how can we who come from God not see the lies that make us one? Are stronger still, all that divides us. Yes, are stronger still than all that divides us. Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord our God. Come to the mountain, God's holy mountain, and sing the praises of the Lord of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. And I would like to invite you and your families for this Holy Eucharist live telecasted. Every day we pray for our donors. We are grateful to them for making this telecast happen. And out of their sacrificial giving, only this is possible. And we have the duty to pray for them every day. That God may shower blessings upon them, give them what they need, as St. Paul would say. You give, you donate, and your other needs will be met by the Lord as we form one community and one church. So we pray for all the donors every day, and particularly this moment of corona, that God may keep them safe, and if they are attacked by corona, that they may be healed completely. God may heal them completely. And also for the following special intentions, Diocese of Karnul from Lurdumata Cathedral Parish. This Mass is offered by Divyamani TV Carpus Fund donor, Srimati Madhuri Rejinamma, for the departed soul of Madhuri Shantaya, Mariamma, Gopal Das, Chennappa, Kamalamma, and Madhuri Rayappa. Iroju, Idivabali Pujanu, Karnul Metrasanam, Ludumata Cathedral Parish Nundi, Divyavani TV Karpas Fund, Molanidi Dathalu, Srimati Madhuri Regina Magaru, Madhuri Shantaya, Mariamma Gopal Das Chinnappa, Kamalamma, Madhuri Raya Patmala, Shanti Kosam, Edive Balipujana Samarpistu Naru. Today's Rosary Divine Mercy Chaplet, Word of God, Holy Hour are also offered for this family and their intentions. Archdiocese of Hyderabad, Balaram Parish, this Mass is offered for Moses Aruldas and Natalia Grace on their 40th wedding anniversary for the good health, good future of the children and for their departed souls of Moses Robert, Upagara Mary, Sujana Ma, Sister Susila Moses Mary, Anthony Swami, Hariyat by Milton, Samson Richard, De Daisy Evangelina, Nadia Annie, 
Ramya, Moses Jordan, Moses Sasa. This mantle is offered for Conrad, Jude, and Reed on his birthday, and also for the good health and good future by wife, Milan, daughters, Evelyn, and Naomi, and parents. Archdiocese of Vishakapatnam, Setamadara Parish. The mass is offered for the departed souls of P.S. Sadhananda Kumar on his birthday by Teresa, Vogayasi, Elizabeth, and Francis. So let's pray for these intentions and today the gospel introduces to us once again that the coming of the Lord is unexpected and we should all be ready. And not just ready but living useful lives living lives, spending lives and energies for others. What matters at the end of the day is what you do to God and to your neighbor. So let's feel sorry for those moments we have failed, first of all, to be in good terms with God and in good terms with man. And also for those moments we have not used well our time, maybe abused our life, so let's feel sorry for those moments and ask God's pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, to my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, I that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my thoughts, thoughts and, and in my words, words in what, what I have done and in what, what I have failed, failed to do through my through fault, fault, through my, through my fault, fault, through my most, most grievous, grievous fault. fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed, Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, and you my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Grant that we may always conform our wills to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses from 2 to 12. I, Paul, assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by the revelation as I have written briefly. When, I, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men, in other generations as it has now been revealed to apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the Gospel. Of this Gospel I was made a minister according to the gifts of God's grace, which was given me by the working of His power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unreachable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the plan of mystery hidden for the ages in God who created all things. That through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose which he realized in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and confidence of access through our faith in him. The word of the Lord. Response Oriel Psalm. Let our response be. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Truly God is my salvation. 
I trust I shall not fear, for the Lord is my strength, my song. He became my saviour, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Our response, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, give praise to his name. Make his mighty deeds known to the peoples. Declare the generations of his name. Sing a psalm to the Lord. Our response, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. For he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Our response, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. in Luke verses 39 to 48. Pay attention to this. If the master of the house had known at what time the thief would come, he would not have let his house be broken in two. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man will come at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, did you tell this parable only for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Imagine then the wise and faithful steward from the master sets over his servants to give them food rations at the proper time. Fortunate is this servant if his master on coming home finds him doing his work. Truly, I say to you, the master will put him in charge of all his property. But it may be that the steward thinks, My Lord delays in coming, and, the big, and he begins to abuse the men servants and the servant girls, eating and drinking and getting drunk. Then the master will come one day, on a day he does not expect him, and at an hour he does not know. He will cut him off and send him to the same fate as the unfaithful. The servant who knew his master's will but did not prepare to do what his master wanted will be punished with sound blows. But the one who did what deserved a punishment without knowing it shall receive fewer blows. Much will be required of the one who has been given much, and more will be asked of the one entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Richard Hutton and Frank Kendig have written a book titled Lifespans, Lifespans, or How Long Things Last. They 
gave examples of unusual things, like, let us say, to give an example, how long does Sindhu's shoes the badminton player last? Two months. How long her badminton, or how many times will she use it in the game? Maybe two times. What about Dhoni? How many times he will use his bat, let's say, in the games? So things like this. What about the boots of a soldier in the battlefield? So things like this have a lifespan. A lot of people come to this building, to St. John's Seminary, where we have our studios, ask us, how many years building is this? How many years would it last? So it's a 60 years almost building. And usually the big buildings, the good buildings last 100 years. That's the lifespan. Now, what is the lifespan of man? You can tell for India this much, that much, but it is not true to everybody. It is not true in the case of everyone. It's not the same in the case of everyone. So today's readings talk about this, that lifespan of man is not predictable and therefore you have to be ready, you have to be awakened, and you have to use your life, your time. And you have to spend it for others. That's the message today. So you have to use it and not waste it and be ready and spend it for others. Because if more is given to you and more will be asked of you. So that is the message. And before just today's uh, message, that is today's readings, if we go to other verses, it talks, we have two uh, images. The first image is the owner, that is Jesus, is welcomed by the servants. The servant is expecting with excitement. There is expectation and excitement when the servant comes and then there is reward. The, the owner that is, when we say Jesus, rewards the servant. But in the second imagery, that what we heard now, it speaks of Jesus coming like a thief. Jesus is that thief. And like a burglar, he breaks into the house because he's not welcomed. He's not welcomed. And he's not expected by the servant, by the steward. And he does not come with gifts or reward. He comes with judgment. And he says he will be considered unfaithful and he will destroy him. So these are the two images. And what is the difference between the two? The relationship of the servant with the manager or the owner. That is the difference. It is the relationship that they cultivate. One thinks that master can come anytime and I am accountable to the master. The other thinks he is the master. He forgets that he is the steward and then he abuses everybody. He is selfish to the core. He drinks, he eats, so there are two types of fruits that these people bring in. Same, but two fruits. Because what is the difference now? The difference is the relationship. And what is the similarity? Similarity in between the two people is, this, is that they do not know the hour of master's coming. They do not know the time. So that is the similarity. But what they produce, the results are different. One produces an excitement, an expectation. And he is ready. He is ready. The other 
eats, drinks, and then gets drunk, loses his senses, and then he is not ready. And he is selfish to the core, and he is unjust with people, and then he abuses his authority. So these are the fruits, two different fruits. So my dear friends, today Jesus is talking about service, that is our life at the service of others. First of all, service is honorable according to him. In Mark 10, chapter 10, verses 43 to 45, we read very interestingly, It shall not be so among you, whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you shall make himself slave of all. My dear friends, a lot of us think in our culture, our culture thinks that being served is being great. And people who are doing the menial jobs, who do work, and they are not considered great, unfortunately. But Jesus is saying that service is honorable. And not only that, he says, think the Son of Man who has not come to be served but to serve and to give his life to redeem many. A lot of people want everybody to serve them, but Jesus' way of greatness is to render service and give sacrificially and be at the service of others, like Jesus. So what is the way you think? How do you think? And John 13, 1 to 17, I mean, the beautiful way he has taught us is that he took his upper garments and then before he I mean, the last meal, in the last meal, he washed the feet of the disciples and said, do likewise. My dear friends, service is honorable in the eyes of God. And that is the reason you have so many saints going to extra mile to do service, to be at the service of people. Mother Teresa, you name any saint. We are talking about Mother, uh, Our Lady of Rosary. She was always at the service of others. Second thing is that leadership is one form of service, is another form of service. 42 of Mark, just a verse before what we read, says, the so-called rulers of the nations act as tyrants and their great ones oppress them. A lot of people think leadership is like showing authority, exhibiting authority. But Jesus talks about that is not so. At least in among the Christians. So how do we take up leadership? Because today everybody wants to be leader. Everybody wants to be leader. Very good. And it is very good. It's noble. That's what the Bible says. But what is it for? Is it for self or is it for others? And First Peter, beautiful, he talks about the elders, but I am trying to uh, apply it to ourselves, to you and to me. First Peter, chapter five, verses one to three. Address myself to those elders among you. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ. See, as an elder, elder means witnessing to the sufferings of Christ, hoping to share the glory what is to be revealed. That's later what happens. The reward of Jesus. 
Shepherd the flock. Shepherd the flock which God has entrusted to you, guarding it not out of obligation, but willingly for God's sake, not as one looking for a reward, but with a generous heart. First of all, shepherd the flock. I want to tell everybody there, listening to the word of God, Jesus is calling you to shepherd in your home, your family, to shepherd the family. What does the shepherd do? Shepherd, first of all, gets up early morning, makes sure everybody's, every sheep is there, and takes them out, puts, gives water and everything, and takes them out to the pastures. And then he protects the sheep from all the harm. Then he also brings the sheep that go astray back to the fold by the stick or the staff. Now, the bishops have made it like a Rajadandam. I mean, we have made it the bishop's staff. Actually, the staff is to call back the sheep. It is straying sheep to correct the sheep to call back. But we want everything gold and, I mean, we also, people also think that everything is the adhikaram, you know, the power and things like that. But what actually, actually here is that we correct and we take care of the lost, our stray sheep. So now first thing is, you have to shepherd. And how many of you are doing it? I know. And I hear many times what happens in the families. There is no responsibility. Sometimes it is the wife, sometimes it is the husband. They don't share the responsibility, the participation. So my dear friends, it's going to be hell. The relationship is not going to be easy in that case. And same thing with parents and family. Same thing with siblings. First of all, you are called to shepherd. And Jesus, the Chief shepherd, the chief shepherd he calls. So he's also the chief shepherd. See, it's not seen in terms of authority. No, not at all. It is shepherding. So remember the shepherd. And the second thing, my dear friends, I want to tell you today, I want to challenge you today. Because what St. Peter says, and I think he understood it when he said this, Shepherd the flock which God has entrusted to you. Authority comes from God, not from human beings, including Caesar was believed to have given authority by God, to have been given authority by God. That's what the Jews believed when they trapped Jesus. Because there is only one God for us, and he gives authority. So, God gives authority, comes from authority. That's why St. Paul tells, pray for all the author people in authority. You must pray. If I am today a priest, the authority comes from God. Bishop, authority comes from God. You are a father, mother. And that's the reason why there is a fourth commandment. What is the fourth commandment? Honor your father and mother. Why? Because God has said it. Not because... You like them, you don't like them. You have to honor them. God has put them in your life as his representatives. So maybe sometimes they may be at fault, but still God, authority comes from God. Now, the second point, authority comes, comes from God, but shepherd the flock, shepherding the flock which God has entrusted you. Guarding it not out of obligation, but willingly. I want to tell you this, and I said I want to challenge you this. So many times, I wanted to leave this place because of the difficulties it, it poses you. The chair, people think it is CEO's chair, but it is a chair of thorns. So it's very painful to sit all through the day. Not only that time, but also with the problems. And a lot of times I wanted to leave this 
ministry in my long years. But only one thing stopped me. Every day I used to pray the imitation of Christ. Sometimes I could not console myself, so I used to pray, taking chapters from there. One, if I am not consoled, take another chapter. And the, another book I have, Jesus Calling, which we are doing the Anudhana Dhyanalu. Every day it coming. Beautiful. So these two things used to keep me going. And only one thing that kept me doing this, and keep, still I am here, is only because it is God's will. My dear friends, I am telling you, it is God's will that I am here. If I did not heed to the call of God and to the will of God, then I would not be here. I am telling you, my dear friends, I know it is difficult. As a wife, as a husband, it is very difficult for you. But you are doing it because it is God's will. So that is what St. Peter talks about. It. Do it because of God's will and do it willingly. Yes, people won't appreciate you. People will pull you. Your own family members will not cooperate with you. They will misunderstand you. They will say this, they will say that. It is then you have to think it is God's will and not your own idea, my dear friends. And willingly for God's sake, for God's sake, not as one looking for a reward, but with a generous heart. Do not lord it over those in your care. Okay. Rather, be an example to your flock. My dear friends, you must become an example. Are you an example to your children? Because they see, they follow. As the leader is, so the people. They follow you. We all follow. We all imitate. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will be given a crown of unfading glory. That's what happens, my dear friends. And Jesus calls us, you know, in John 15, chapter 14 to 15 verse. I call you friends. I don't call you anymore. And he says, who, who are his friends? The ones who will act according to his word. The ones who will obey his commandments. So my dear friends, this Sunday we'll be talking about what is the greatest commandment to love God and to love neighbor. So again, it comes, it boils down. What is at the end of the day? What have you done to God and what have you done to your neighbor? That's what matters, my dear friends. And your judgment depends on your responsibility. Now many of you say, you father say so many things and you don't practice what you say. Yes, sometimes it is true, my dear friends, forgive us. And this is what God says to us. My brothers and sisters, James chapter 3 verse 1, do not, don't all be teachers. He says, don't be all teachers. That's a big warning because we all like to teach, you know. We all like to preach. We all like to tell people. We like to advise people. My brothers and sisters, don't all be teachers. You know why? You know that as teachers, we will be judged most strictly. We will be judged most strictly. So, that explains, I believe. So, don't worry about us. Pray for us. Pray for all those who do not follow what they preach. My dear friends, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 2 to 12, where Paul speaks even today's reading, that my mission is to proclaim gospel to all the Gentiles. And Cardinal John Henry Newman is to say, I have a mission. Yes, this is what I had always in mind, my dear friends. I have this mission of, this burden of the channel, TV channel. That's what kept me so many years. And you have a mission too. I know many of you as parents surviving, struggling, because you have that mission and you have taken that mission. And God bless you. My friends, God bless you. Because you have the mission given by God. It's a mission given by God. And 
at the end of the day, so it matters to God. And I wind up this with a story because service, what service is all about or what the mission is all about or what authority is all about. There was a king who had his, uh, the mantri, his uh, chancellor, and uh, he's about old and he's supposed to die. And then uh, the king asked, so who shall succeed me? And then uh, the chancellor told, you have two servants in your court. Why don't you pick one of those? And then king asked as an interview. The first one came and he asked, so what would you do as a king? And he said, I will strictly implement the laws. Strictly implement the laws. Then the second one came and said, I will continue to be a servant. I will continue to be a servant. Because after all, what is the difference? You're a king or not a king. Only the throne is the difference. Service is the same. Because king is supposed to be the first servant. So my dear friends, and I think that explains to us, service is what God is expecting of you and me. Loving Father, we thank you for the gift of leadership in the church, for Pope Francis, the bishops and the priests and the religious. Lord, you have called them with a greater responsibility because you're telling us today more is given to you, the more is expected of you. And give them the grace, Lord, to live lives that are exemplary. What they preach, they may practice. Lord, give them wisdom, give them grace that is sufficient and needed. And particularly for the priests here working, and especially for all the priests all over Telangana and Andhra Pradesh, where they are ministering to our people that you, God, keep them safe from corona and help them to be spiritual, help people to be spiritual in these bad times. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we once again thank you for the word that you have broken to us. Lord, you said that we should be people of expectation. We are, not, we are only stewards and not the masters. You are the master. And Lord, your coming is not expect, is not uh, timed and help us to be aware every time to be ready for you. And especially, Lord, we thank you for the gift of shepherding whatever position we are in. Especially, Lord, we thank you for the families who are shepherding. Husbands, wives, <coughs> parents, mothers, fathers, siblings taking up responsibilities. And in the community, people taking up responsibilities, services. Lord, in a special way, give them the grace and help them to understand that service authority is given for the welfare of others. Lord, especially our people, our servants. They're supposed to be servants in each department, but they act as if they are the owners and authority and they are inhuman sometimes, Lord. We are inhuman when we are in that power. Help us to be human, humane, because service is honorable. Leadership is another form of service. Lord, in a special way, I pray at this time for all those families who are struggling to continue to shepherd the families, that they may take up as it is the will of God, as it is your will, and that they may do it with wholeheartedly, in spite of its difficulty. Give them the grace at this time needed in their life, in their families. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all our donors who have been responsible, because they were given much and they are responsible. Lord, bless them and give them more. As you said, the one who is faithful steward, more will be given. All the property will be given. Give them what they need in their lives. Lord, bless Divyavani, especially to be of relevance to these people in these times. 
and to be relevant every time and help us all who are working here, that we are privileged to work here as priests and as staff, that we have to make these programs relevant and bless all those people who are contributing, that they may also be of relevance. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now we pray for your own intention in silence. We ask all these intentions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father Almighty and ever-living God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing, changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with our Pope Francis and our Bishop Tomabala and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our chief spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy, thy name, thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give this, us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. No Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to his banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Okay. 
Let's all pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come into my heart spiritually. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself to you wholly. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. benefiting from participation in heavenly things we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord Amen my friends good afternoon to everybody and thank you for the masses that you have offered because it's a big help to keep this channel going I know you can celebrate mass or offer mass outside for just hundred rupees I know but you do this out of your love for TV channel because our production cost is very high and then our broadcasting is much more higher distribution cost and that is the reason a lot of you are donating and offering masses and that is some of you are doing also the direct debit forms every month. So I would like to request one way or other, help us to continue this ministry, which is spiritual and which is very, very needed to us and to everyone. So my dear friends, continue to support the Vyavani. And evening we have 5.15, the Holy Rosary followed by the Holy Mass. 
So you must understand every day this happens. And the 31st day, the bishop will be here. One of the bishops will be here for the concluding day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.